All right, here we go. Get ready to have a good time. This is exciting, isn't it? All right, we're on. Hello, testing, testing, testing. Welcome aboard the Dreamliner. <laughs> it's the only way to fly. <laughs> Spartans! What is your profession? <laughs> Podcaster Gary Myers? <laughs> Uh-huh. Gary, Gary, Gary. Here's a young speaker who is really in demand. Don't let that go to your head, Gary. <laughs> no, wait, there's more. See, I'm I'm the guy. He is Gary Meyer. It's June 11th, 2021 at 6 p.m. Eastern, 5 Central, 4 Mountain, 3 Pacific, 2 Alaska, and New Hawaii. I am Tim Pickering, your on-the-scene reporter, welcoming you to Season 2 of the Gear Force Cocktail Hour Live. Thank you so much for streaming. And remember, when news breaks, I will be on the scene. I like just the waistcoat look. No matter where you are, it's time for a digital mimosa. Cocktails, woo, drinks. I'm cool with the new look. That's what the network wants. That's what the network's going to get. As always, you can replay this and all of our shows whenever you like. Subscribe to the Gear Force Live YouTube channel for the best way to stream along during the live cocktail hour or to replay it when you need it. Comments are welcome during our live shows on any of our streaming platforms. And you can also text us at 773-888-2157. Charges may apply. Now, fasten your seatbelts. It's time to go wheels up on the Gear Force Live. Gary, I hope you're there. Gary? Okay, I think I got it. I put the Gear Force credit card in. This isn't the file. Wait a second here. Wait one second. We'll get it loaded right here. I think I look great. Okay, not that file either. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> All right, Gary, you won't want to look at the credit card bill when we're done. Anyway, let's have a great season two. Here's to you. Thank you, Alan. I'm not doing two weeks off in a row again as far as the cocktail show. I need my cocktail. I got my liver cleaned out. I hope you did too. And now we can fill it back up. Let's get it wet for season two. Welcome. Glad to have you on board. Wow. Uh, so much going on. Let me just say July is going to be crazy ass on the cocktail show. Let me tell you about that in just a minute. But today, my special guest, Jeff Villamec. He is, as you heard in the opening, Leslie's nephew, and he knows a lot about technology, so we're going to talk about that and see where we're going there, if not into a handbasket of some sort, the way things are going. And you also heard about the current posting on my, my blog about UFOs. I don't dig them. I think it's bullshit. I think it's a distraction. The Supreme Being is doing this. As you know, my philosophy is this is all a joke. There's nothing to look for as far as meaning, but let's enjoy every day. You're better off and stop with this. Oh, there's life on other planets. And that's a distraction to keep us amused or whatever. Let's go with what we have, which is cocktails and gummies or whatever you use to get off and fun. F-U-N. That's what we do here. Let me bring in Leslie. Be oh, we have to kick the tires and light the fires. Otherwise, there's no wheels up. Yes. See, I almost forgot how to do that. Every Friday, in the last two Fridays, about this time, I was shaking. I'm thinking, where's, where's the cocktail show? Yeah, I could have a cocktail, but it's not the same. I want to be with you, you all. You all, as Oprah would say. Like Debbie and Stefan and, oh, Keely Ann. She was not the first one to check in. Alan, can we bring up Keely Ann's text? Keely Ann, in the past, during season one, was the first person to text in every Friday. And then she wasn't there toward the end of season one. And I asked what happened. And then she said, well, somebody pulled my text when I posted it. Here's what she put on there today. Gary and company, your comment would need to be reported as offensive to YouTube. And they would be the ones to remove it. 
because nobody here did that. We love your schnauzer comments. And if you want to talk on the show, Keely Ann, text Keith, and he will get you onto the show via phone. All right? All right. Because we wouldn't ban you. We love hearing about your schnauzer. Leslie, what are you drinking? Uh, not nearly enough. Yeah. Um, but here, here's where we went today. It's a minimalist little bottle, and it's called Flat Top. A Sauvignon Blanc. And But I kind of like that. Uh, look, it's got a peekaboo. Yeah, yeah and it's very summery there. looking. It, isn't it? Yeah, very so, light and, and summery. And Here's, here's the new thing. Okay, because you know that I made the other bottles into light, uh, into little lamps and stuff. Yeah. So I'm kind of done with that. But here's my new fave. Ooh, it's gruels. Because <laughs> when you want your liquor, you want it now. And sometimes yeah. finding that corkscrew can be a pain in the ass. Yeah, so that's the best phrase that pays. If it screws, it's delightful. <laughs> that's what my bumper sticker says. Okay, later. After this program, if you're interested, I'm going to be on a radio show. Remember radio? And if you're in the Chicago area, well, is it it's, popular? It uh, streams. Oh, wait, it was back <laughs> in the day. What? The radio station streams. So if you're interested in hearing me on this radio show with Dave Plyer, my friend Dave Plyer on WGN 720 AM, formerly the 50,000 watt blower, I'll be on with him at 730 Central talking about vinyl. I guess tomorrow is National Vinyl Appreciation Day, something like that. Is and this when those guys who wear chaps and no pants show up in town and and walk each other around on no, leashes? That's a, that's a different kind of vinyl. Oh. Yeah, that's the international Mr. Leather that you're thinking oh, of. Leather and vinyl. Oh, okay. Yes. Never. And, I'm and sure latex. Oh, latex. Not vinyl. And I'm yeah. sure you're thinking about that a lot. My favorite <laughs> moment from that get together and they would always have it in Chicago and I'd be around the hotel just because I was around the hotel. The radio station was around where they had it. Yeah, that's my excuse. <laughs> and I'm walking toward the hotel where this was happening and there's a family in front of me. They look like they were from Iowa or Nebraska. Ho 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 wholesome people, all American. Walk in, looking at the buildings, hey, beautiful summer day. And a guy is walking towards them from the hotel where the convention's happening with a T-shirt that has I heart cock on it. <laughs> and I'm behind these and they see the guy's T-shirt. And I'm like, this is a Norman Rockwell on acid. Oh, well. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to be on talking about vinyl with Dave Plyer and... My daughter bought a turntable this past year, and she went into my record collection and pulled out some albums. And I'm going to show you what she pulled out of my collection, and maybe this will trigger some memories for those of you who collected vinyl in the day. She got this one. Remember this? Oh, yeah. Look at that. Promotional copy. Ooh. Oh, look. Uh, and you didn't resell it, because that's how a lot of people <laughs> who worked on the radio, that thing that you're going to appear yeah. on tonight, um, how they made their money on the side was they would get these promotional records and then sell them on the black market right. to make no, ends No, I, I didn't do that. I, I just okay. like to have it. I have this Emotional Rescue Stones album, and it's still shrink-wrapped. That, That's I mean, something. never, never <laughs> opened it, just got it. Okay, how about this one? Remember this one? Ooh. Aww. Huh? Gone too yeah, soon, Tom. I know. I mean, this Damn is getting it. sad. We were listening to some traveling Wilburys the other night. Oh, I know. I know how good Bob Dylan. Yeah. Dylan there. Okay. Oh, okay. so these are ones your daughter actually. She, she grabbed them out of my stash and she's listening to them on her turntable. And I just I'm looking at this going, oh, this is kind of funny. This is like a time warp little fun thing. Breakfast Super, in America. Yeah, remember that? And these album covers will look great on the right. radio. Yeah, the album I can't do this on with Dave on WGN. So I'm doing it here as a little preview. I, Although we worked with people on the radio who would get in front of a microphone and go, oh, yeah. look. Look, yeah, and, and start doing visual stuff and you're listening going, what the hell are you talking about? What are you guys doing? The best Are Aretha, about the, the great Aretha, okay? Oh, respect. Yeah. 
And, oh, how about this one? Joe Cocker. Oh, okay. uh, yeah. I love that album. Um, believe it or not, the first um, dance with my husband and I at our wedding. You are so beautiful. Oh, it was edgy there you go. and, oh, golly. Cheap trick. Yeah. <laughs> love those guys. Huh? Um, I think they're still touring this summer, too. Yeah, they're always touring. They're, I mean, they're touring again. Uh, who? Do you remember any of these, Leslie? I mean, these are, some of these are 45, 50 years old now. That's the so, scary part. Uh, apparently, some uh, older family members introduced me to some of this stuff because, obviously, I'm too young to know them from the first time look, they Look what else she up. pulled. Aww. I worked at a station that played late 50s into mid 60s music. And these, these are the albums that I would get. This is what I took home. And this guy's had a career like a lot of other people would wish to have. I mean, he has been going for what, 60 years, 70 years? Is he still playing Vegas or something? I think so, maybe? yeah. And- Although, you, you know what? He's probably right in that, that age where like at some point, yeah, you just got to kind of call it. Yeah. Even you, well, uh, no, what, I mean, I, uh, I'm not saying that because I might be doing this for a long time because I like doing it. So I'm not saying right. anything, but the album, my, my point will be tonight with Dave. You don't have, well, now there are record stores again and you can go and pick up these albums. But this was so much fun to get the album and look at it as you're listening to it and, and the line well, notes could, and. I mean, and that's it. And the lyrics usually inside, you could find some lyrics, so you actually knew what they were singing, and you yeah. could sing along. And uh, I always like the ones that would open up because, um, uh, I, not me personally, yeah. but other people would roll their joints in there. Um, yeah, it, right. It, the, it was multi-purpose. Right, you'd open it up and drop all that and get the seeds out of there. And see, oh, Lord. Uh, the kids today have it too easy. They can go and just buy the stuff, and it's already made. Too easy. Okay, so that's tonight, 7.30 Central, if you want to check that out with Dave. I always like being on his show. And July. Oh, I mentioned July. Here's there what's coming go. up in July. Listen to this. On July 9th, Molly Bloom. If you've seen the movie Molly's Game or read the book Molly's Game, which the movie was based on, I'm going to have Molly on. And this movie, if you've seen it, wow, or read the book, you know what we're talking about here. Molly got involved in high stakes poker games and then got busted. And I think she's the first person that will be on the cocktail show that dealt with the Russian mob that I know of. Molly Bloom. I don't know. Jeff's kind of sketchy, but I think okay. he, I, I think he's all American still. So yeah. That's... And she was portrayed in the movie by Jessica Chastain. How about that? This is her first book. She gets it made into a movie that was written and directed by Aaron Sorkin. Yeah. So that's on July 9th. She'll have a story to tell. She pled guilty. She's one of those rare people who she was caught. Tax evasion is always where they get you. And she pled guilty for a lesser sentence. And we'll hear about what that was all about on July 9th. Well, and didn't you, Idris Elba is in that movie too, right? Yes. He plays her lawyer. And this is okay. another hot actor. In the first movie okay. she gets made on her book, she's got these A-listers portraying her and the lawyer. Nice. How, how about nice. that? Nice. And then on July 16th, Dezo Molnar. Dezo is designing a flying car. And he's been working on this for a while. And he's been around the world exhibiting his flying car. And we'll have Dezo on to talk about when we can have our own flying car. And this is a cool guy because he's kind of the 21st century Wright brother. Wait till you see some of the stuff that he's put together. It's well, wild. And, and because I listened to the Gary Meyer show, I realize just what a quick leap that can be sometimes because the um, the Wright brothers were still alive in One the of days them. of the bombers. Right? One of them. One died yeah. relatively Younger. young. Yeah. Okay. And one made it to 1948. So he was able to see jet propulsion. That must have been pretty cool to go from his glider to seeing what became of where they started and now. 
if he had just hold had held on for about let's see 48 uh almost 21 years he could have seen man on the moon if you believe that happened some people don't well you know with all the ufo talk it's hard to know what to believe these uh, yeah, days. okay july 23rd <laughs> barry butler he is a photographer and he has a book he's very much into the chicago landscape and he has been taking photos and he did a lot of photo taking during the pandemic as a nice elixir to show you some beautiful things that are still out there during a pandemic and i'll have barry on to talk about his photographs all right he's so amazing because he actually it, it's not just a guy who shows up with a camera he follows meteorology and all the other things going on at, at astronomically, um, so that he's there for like the recent uh, eclipse. And and he gets pictures the likes of which you're yeah. not going to find anywhere yeah. else. It's and he's cool. very active on Twitter. If you follow Twitter at all, you'll see him posting pictures all the time. On one of the openings this past week, I said we have entered the kids and animals left in hot cars season. And that would be mostly dogs as far as animals go. Yesterday, after I post that a couple days ago, yesterday I go to the hardware store, I get out of the car, and two slots down, there's a car with a dog in it, nobody in the car, the back window is cracked about two inches, and it's a bit overcast, it's not 90, but it doesn't take much before a car can get really hot. Right. And I looked at that and I thought, what are these people thinking? And you hear this all the time. You might think, oh, if I put the window down a couple inches, it'll ha have some air and it'll be fine. No, it's got a fur coat on, number one, and the poor dog is sitting on the passenger seat looking out the window. Hey, hey, are they coming back soon? And I felt like crap just looking at the poor dog. Don't well, do that. A lot, a lot of municipalities are now making it law that you can crack, uh, like, get a hammer and break a window yeah. if you think that this animal is in distress. So Yes, it doesn't take, but I think 10 minutes, they say, before it goes up 15, 20 degrees inside a car. And you still hear about this every day. And kids left in cars because the mother wants to go shopping and she doesn't have a babysitter, so she leaves the kids in the car. Okay, let's go to Jeff. He's going to fill us in on this technology that's been happening against us. And going back to the Wright brothers, when the Wright brothers saw planes being used for warfare, they got really depressed because they never thought that would happen. They never put that in the equation. And with this technology that we're all experiencing now, yeah, a lot of it is going to evil. And that's where we're at, especially with the cyber thieves demanding ransom for these companies. And the companies have been paying them, most of them. And Jeff, Let's start with that. I know one of the crises we had in the past year, more specifically in the last month or so, was the shortage of dipping sauces. And I also saw, get this, there is a shortage of exotic dancers in New Orleans, and they're paying uh, signing bonuses to get women to come and sign up at this club. That's where we're at at this point. And there's a surge of people coming out of their bunkers and going and doing things. And the pipeline is very clogged. You may have noticed my hair is kind of willy nilly. I can't get in to see my operator because everybody's making appointments for things. And you have to wait because now people are going out and they're getting things done that they postponed for a year. Jeff, I don't know what you're finding in your life as far as scheduling goes, but you know all this stuff. So you can probably cut ahead of the line. You know how to get things well, done. Yeah, well, we, we, I, I think last time I was on, we talked a little bit about how retail has changed and I do everything online, so. I, yeah, you don't leave the house. You're I, one I of those guys, I, I don't have I, And I cut my own hair, so I, yeah. I don't even have to do that one. <laughs> or worry about yeah. that. I don't have to make appointments to do anything. I'm Jeff, I know what to do. You, you, <laughs> I, you, I, you yeah. Yeah, you know I, do, I do everything online. And as you said, the, the criminals, they're moving online too. They're, yeah. they're moving to, taking their crime online and they can just sit back in whatever country that they're in with lower regulation and, and less uh, opportunity to even be caught 
and from the the privacy of their of their bunkers uh, go after a lot of these big companies and that's that was some of the weird stuff that we've been seeing in the last uh, couple of months a couple of really big ones and um, this is going to continue it's been going on for years actually yeah we've been hearing about this for years so my question would be is there no 100% security that you can put on your system of your company to protect yourself do you, you have no 100% guarantee no matter what you put on there no 100% guarantee. The problem with security is that it's many, many layers. And a lot of times, the weakest layer is people. Uh, it, in, in some of these cases where this ransomware has gotten in place, what's happened is people have opened bad emails or given away their password when they shouldn't have, or they're typing in their password in places that they, they shouldn't be. And then the hackers have your login and password, and they just go and log into your work account. That's so there's, a key there's way no, that happens. There's no way that you can. What security are you familiar with that has like a 98% rate of protection? If if you keep your computer, so so ransomware can happen to anybody anywhere. The ones that happen to the big businesses, that's a big problem. But it can it can happen to us on our personal PCs. If you keep your computer updated all the time, and every time there's an update from you know, from Microsoft or from Apple, if you update your computer and you got antivirus turned on, um, that's number one. That's that's a good baseline. Number two, don't let, download any bad software. Don't don't go to weird places to get you know some weird game that you've never heard of before. Don't open attachments in emails from anyone that you don't know personally, and you aren't sure that that's somebody who should be sending you something. Um, and don't type your password into other places. If you follow some of those simple rules, you're 98, 99% protected. And that's um, as good as it's going to get, because you said yeah. it's not possible to do 100% against these people who spend all day hacking. That's what they right. do. <laughs> <laughs> We're encrypted. <laughs> you've, now, you've now been encrypted. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, someone, someone's asking about VPN. That's another way to protect yourself. A lot of places that people can get into trouble is where they go to a coffee shop, and maybe it's a you know Starbucks is relatively locked down with the way their their Wi-Fi works. But you go some random place with your laptop and you get on the free Wi-Fi. Well, look, there's free Wi-Fi here. If you're not exactly sure of where that free Wi-Fi is coming from, that again could be bad guys offering you free Wi-Fi and then looking at your passwords when you type them into your bank account. What does VPN stand for? VPN is virtual private network. So when you turn on your, your VPN software, and you can get this from lots of lots of different places, um, when you turn on a VPN, it then encrypts uh, the, all of the text and things that you're typing into your computer before it gets to the place that you're sending it. So when it goes over the Wi-Fi, even if it's bad actors running that Wi-Fi, they can't see what you're doing. They can't see what you're typing. That does protect you. So VPN is a, a good way to sort of hide um, what you're doing from people that shouldn't be seeing it. When COVID started, I believe you were on last year with me, right? Yep. Was it around when COVID was starting? Yeah. Yeah, okay. we, were, we, were, we were into it to, to, to some degree. And what has come out of COVID that was on the horizon already as far as technology, but was accelerated by COVID, or what came to be because of COVID that you've seen in the last 15 months? A, a place that I spend a lot of time talking to big companies and, and, and people about is retail, you know, and we're all, we all shop all the time. At the start of COVID, within about the first two, three, four months of COVID, what happened was all of the things we expected to happen in terms of technology, like shopping online, everything got accelerated. Everything that we thought could happen had to happen much more quickly. So we had about two years of technology progress in, in retail. In, the, in terms of using technology in the first two months of the pandemic. And it's accelerated a little, little bit more in the, in the last few months. So buying, buying online, just stores that never had online purchasing. Now, if they don't, they have, they're out of business. Uh, buy online and pick up at the curb, that kind of thing, or buy online and pick up at a locker somewhere. That's a big thing that's changed in the past 12 months. Uh, a, a bunch of these kinds of changes, as we start to open back up, a lot of it's going to stick around, and that's going to be really interesting to see what sticks around. Because as all of us have started using it, we st we've started to like it. Uh, maybe I maybe I do want to just order my groceries on my phone real quick and drive up to the curb and have somebody put it in my trunk. 
that's kind of convenient whether or not there's a pandemic or whether or not I can go in the store. So some of that kind of thing is going to stick around. And then there's 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 bunches of other things too, like for for the workers. Um, I could talk about some of that. I'm sure you've seen this commercial that Domino's is running with the robotic delivery, the driverless delivery, that vehicle that's going down the street and you go and it pulls up to your house. You go down to the curb there. I'm sure you put in a password and there's your pizza inside. Yep. Have, Usually have you tap, tap your phone. There's there's a few ways that robots are roaming city streets. They've tested this in San Francisco and a couple other places. A big automated vehicle, that's probably going to be the future. That's probably how you're going to get your Amazon packages in, in four or five years. And Smaller versions where there's a little robot that's like driving down the sidewalk the size of a like a, a cooler. That is uh, that that's something that's out and about for getting packages or food delivery for you, a hot meal. Uh, they've got robots like that that drive up and down the hallways of the hotel. So if you call down the concierge and say, hey, I forgot my toothbrush. Can you guys run me up a toothbrush? The robot rides the elevator, comes to your hotel room, drops out and you know pops its lid open when it when it tells that's you and you get your toothbrush. So this yeah. is the um, this this is a really interesting way to to see some of this technology in action. Leslie and I were talking about this the other day as far as the self checkout at grocery stores. You see more and more of the aisles being self checkout because they're trying to eliminate cashiers. And that's happening with robotics in all these categories. There go jobs. I know somebody will say, well, the job will be to repair the robotics or something like that. But there's going to be a job that is replaced by a robot one on one where that person is out of a job, period. That's the part that seems kind of scary. Some of that will come. What we're seeing right now, and so just to, to let everybody have a little sigh of relief before the robots take over, they will take over eventually. Uh, but what's happening right now is robots are being added to the frontline workforce. So as you're hearing right now, there is a demand for workers. And Amazon, as an example, Amazon installs 100,000 robots um, every year across all of their, they've got robots running everywhere and they're running all these robots. They have not stopped hiring people. Um, they continue to hire as many people as they were before they started installing robots in every place. So robots as partners to people, that's where we're going to see the most uh, advance in automation right now. We need robotic exotic dancers, apparently. Apparently, in There's New Orleans. <laughs> you can't replace the exotic dancer, or can you? That could be quite disturbing. It's we an evolution of Chuck E. Cheese there that uh, I, th I think we don't want to see. We were talking before we went live about cryptocurrency, and you mentioned that Tesla has stopped taking crypto, and it just started where they were taking crypto. What happened there? Uh, I think Elon jumped the gun a little bit on the ability for cryptocurrency and Bitcoin in particular to support the kind of transaction volume and things that they would want to do to buy cars. If you wanted to, to if you really worked hard, you could probably still buy a car with Bitcoin. Uh, the, the, the problem is Bitcoin is is new and it's a new technology. Uh, it works in some interesting ways that don't at, at at scale at the at the scale of the billions of transactions that credit cards do today. It has some problems keeping up. Uh, so well, may be interesting and useful to us uh, in the future. Uh, it's certainly in the news as even uh, just as we started out talking about ransomware. A lot of the ransoms are demanded in cryptocurrency like Bitcoin because it's very easy to transfer currency that way very quickly. It's also very easy to launder because now we don't have international tracking of currencies. So it's it's in a weird spot. And because it's in that weird spot and it's early from a technology and from a regula regulation and from a use and a, and a, a currency speculation perspective, everybody's a little bit wishy-washy on it. Elon's pretty aggressive. I think Elon went out there and said, yeah, yeah, sure, we're going to do it. And then he had to walk that back a little bit when... Uh, when he realized the reality was was still probably a couple of years off before he could really do that. A guy like yourself who's totally immersed in technology, does it appeal to you at all to put your toe in the water with it? Maybe you have already, you don't have to say, but overall, what do you think about it as something you'd get into or not? I do not. So the, the way you're talking about it, get, getting into it, um, but either buying Bitcoin as a speculative currency or trying to mine it yourself, I've studied it. I've I've watched it since its inception. I have not gotten into it at all, and I would not recommend 
trying to get into it as a as a speculation unless unless you're an international currency trader and you understand how this stuff works it is it is imag it is imaginary value it's not backed by anything so if you if you understand how international currency markets work and you can make money on those margins then fine otherwise you're just rolling the dice and it's it's uh it's it's a random crapshoot any thoughts post pandemic that you want to share with us as far as what you're heading into technology wise i think for all of us i i think we're just going to see this opportunity uh across our work across every industry that we operate in like like retail i think we're going to see all of the, the the bits of technology that we started to use in the pandemic or we were forced to use, we're gonna see that continue to, to be used and accelerate. So it's gonna be a fun time to get to use a lot of things that would have been future, would have not come for the next two, three, four years. We'll get to use it all right now in, uh, in some really interesting ways. And and maybe, you know, and maybe have some fun with it. Get, you know, getting things delivered, getting getting stuff coming right to your house, getting to, to check in or buy tickets right on my phone or what, read menus at the restaurant right on my phone. Uh, there's, there's a lot of that that, uh, that works really well for us. So I'm, I'm happy with that. That's why I've always been a big fan of the space, space program because the technology that they use to put these rockets and stuff together over the years, some of that trickles down, if not a lot of it, to the consumer, you and me, GPS and, and those kinds of things because they have the wherewithal and the money to work on that stuff and then it becomes a consumer item. That's what I like, and that's why I like NASA to be supported. Yep, NASA, and now we've got commercial, uh, we've got commercial space exploration, but same sorts of things. We've got uh, Blue Origin and uh, and and Elon Musk out there, and they're doing a lot of this research alongside NASA and sharing things back and forth. That's where some of these. Interesting uses of the emerging technology, this these high-end tech is is coming from. We're still harvesting that from researchers like NASA these days, and ha happy to do it. I don't know if they're harvesting any of it from the the, the UFOs, um, but yeah. that that, okay. that remains to, to to be seen, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Keep believing in that. All right, <laughs> Jeff. <laughs> always a pleasure. Have a great summer. You too. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for having me on. Thank you. Well. Robots are stealing your luggage at the airport. Go with that. That's what's happening as far as technology. And the fact is, COVID, as Jeff said, has accelerated some of the stuff that was going to happen anyway. But because everybody was locked down, they had to use technology and liked it. And now they're going to stay with technology. I don't want to go back to the office. I want to just stay home and do everything from home. And they can't. Um, he was talking about like the whole idea of never having to touch a grimy menu again is super cool in my book. Are you have you been to a restaurant that's no. using QR codes instead of menus? I haven't been to a restaurant yet. I'm planning on going <gasps> soon that? now because everything's open. But 15 months now have not been to a restaurant. Oh man, you won't know how to act. You're gonna have to have a bib. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh -huh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Who's that lady? Well, uh, to that point, remember this. Remember that story I had that said, "Well, forty percent don't want to go back to the office, and fifteen percent are inarticulate because they've been away from the office or away from people." How do you become completely inarticulate at home? Me, no, no. I, me, me, I just watch not understand television. Um, the other thing is how many people have forgotten how to drive apparently. Yeah. And part of that I think is willful because it's just crazy town on the roads these days. Yeah. Because um, again, everybody's out of the bunker and going nuts. Oh, this feels so good. I want to do this. I want to do that. And they say the wedding planners are now going from famine to feast because now the weddings are back on and you can't well, get a place to have your wedding and all that. And people like um, our own uh, producer, Keith, uh, had their weddings remotely. And some people are now saying, well, that was cool, but I still want to have the party. I want to have yeah. the actual wedding. And so now they're, they're planning that second round of uh, excitement. And it's going to get expensive. Um, there's still supply issues. 
By the way, we were talking about the Ever Given. That the ship Ever, in the Suez Canal. The one that blocked up the Suez Canal is still sitting in a lake called Lake Bitter, <laughs> which Perfect. seems so appropriate, um, with $100 million worth of cargo aboard. And, and they said everything from camping equipment to Ikea furniture. Um, dipping sauces. Dipping sauces. and Exotic a lot dancers. Of those... There's a lot of that <laughs> on there. Well, the, the mechanical dancers. Uh, like that Russian guy who you can get one with a, a girl top and a chicken bottom and all yeah. that. They're probably on that ship too. But yeah, And that is that is now stalled. They are going to fight for the next couple of years over that ship, and it's not going anywhere. I know, speaking of space, as we were a few minutes ago, Jeff Bezos is going into space, and there's a lot of activity out there on social media about what the rocket looks like that he's going to get on. Hmm. Look at that. Okay, hmm. I thought being the richest guy on the planet was the extender. How, <laughs> how small is this guy? I have to have a rocket that looks like a penis. So he's going up there with his brother, and all I could think of was that Saturday Night Live cartoon, the ambiguously gay duo. <laughs> yeah. And if you took their car and moved right. it upright, it's, his, like it's a penis. his rocket ship. <laughs> yeah, that, that car in the cartoon looked like a penis. That's what uh, those are supposed to do. They're, they're an extender. But if I had $185 billion in the bank, I don't think I'd need the extender. He's got the 500-foot <laughs> ship. And the follow right. ship for his helicopter. Really, Jeff, is it that small? <laughs> oh, Lordy. But, it, and it's almost he's gotten to that Dr. Evil kind of thing. Right. Where his ship is shaped like a penis and he's bald. <laughs> and if he gets a hairless cat, holy shnikes, that, it, it is 100% Austin Powers. That's it. Now. That'll be the end of you're not that cool, Jeff. If you have that <laughs> much extension going, come on. Oh, Lord. All right. Speaking of pictures, Alan wants to share one. He had his air conditioning unit worked on, and the guy who came out to work on it found something in the unit. What is that, Alan? Yeah, I had a, I had a lovely snake inside my, uh, what do we call them, heat pump outside. Uh, and you see it's wrapped around the coils pretty oh, good. That's, and a, I can, that's a heat I can, pump. That's a heat pump. Oh. And so here we go. That's the snake taking a bite out of the metal plate that put 240 volts right into it and killed it. And the uh, the tech told me he was shocked that the thing was still running. <laughs> not and, the snake, of course. And that the, looks like it's yeah, been in the there air for a conditioner, while. not the snake. Yes. It's a it's a heat pump. It's a heat pump. A lot of wires there. It kind of blends into the wiring. Yeah. It looks like yeah, it's been there for a while. Was it there for a while? Because that snake looks very thin at that point. Well, I had issues this winter where, so the heat pump is the thing that they started installing in Florida to save electricity, right? It it basically transfers heat differently than the old Freon-based polluting systems that, you know, we had before in the 70s and 80s and whatnot. And the heat pump system in the winter here in Florida is necessary. I have nights that are in the 30s. And this winter, the heat pump wasn't able to get as much heat out of the air as it had in past winters. That and a blocked line, I was told, uh, caused it to turn on auxiliary heat. And that was the only indication I had that something was up, that my auxiliary heat kept kicking in instead of instead of the snake. So that would probably put it December, January, something like that. You know who else has a snake in their heat pump? Jeff Bezos. <laughs> of course. Of course. Here, wait, wait, wait. I'll, I'll give the visual. There we yeah, go. Yeah, uh, baby. Look at me. Blast dude. off. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, baby. Come on. Hey, that's snake. rockets aren't penile enough. Come exactly. On. You don't have to do any kind of design on it. It starts <laughs> off as a penis. Put, putting that bulbous top on there. there yeah. You go. Come on. That snake, if stretched out, looked like it would be pretty long. Did you get a guesstimate on it? He didn't. He didn't give me an indication. When I walked the neighborhood, I mean, I see a little checkered pattern on it, which reminds me of a corn snake, which are non-venomous, which is nice. Um, I've seen a corn snake on my driveway before, and they're eh, seven, eight feet if you were to stretch it out. Um, so that could very well be that long. 
Well, you've built on a swamp there. This development was probably a swamp 80 years ago, 60 years ago. So what's in a swamp besides well, politicians? I mean, and and I, got, I got Gator. Uh, if if you like, I got a Gator video I can show you. <laughs> let me let that me bring you up saw the Gator. When you were on one of your walks, yeah, yeah. This was this was I don't know two three weeks ago. Everything everything in this little vid that I've got here, and I'll keep the audio of it off. Everything in this particular vid is uh, something I've seen within two miles of the house. And here's here's a turtle and a Gator, and the turtle sees the Gator, and the Gator misses. And uh, I've I've got a close up here, and then I also have slowed it down. So you can see that the, the bad news for the gator is his vision, I think, just doesn't tell him where his snout ends because he misses that turtle by a mile. Well, it's kind of hard if you don't get it <laughs> in the right way that that shell is going to be slippery. And, and oh, look yeah. At him. Look at him. Damn, I almost had so it. That, yeah, that gator was none too pleased. And then he, that turtle was not done with this gator. So something had hatched in the neighborhood and everything in the neighborhood was eating the hatching. And I think that's eggshell that the gator's chomping on here. And the gator just can't chomp on it. And actually none of the creatures seem to be able to chomp on it, but they all wanted to. And uh, don't worry, the ibis that walked by is just fine. It, it, uh, it was not attacked by the gator. It's not that kind of video. But the turtle here comes for the, and the gator goes for the turtle again. The turtle doesn't care, the gator misses again. That's a pretty big turtle. I didn't see the size of it that first time. I didn't that know was, it was that, that was, big. Yeah, that was a huge one. Then, then I've oh, got, wait, I've got. Were there two turtles? No, well, there, there were probably a dozen turtles. I've, I've got to stop the squeaking in my ear because that, that thing is chirping. I, I thought you'd like this, Gary, because you always talk about animals working. This, this bird was digging. He was okay. digging, and these, these birds were bathing, <laughs> bathing and digging and chewing and chomping and bada boop, bada beep. You and know, and, Ellen lives and, in and, an area close yeah, I was gonna say one of my favorites. Wait, 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 you gotta watch you yeah. gotta watch mama duck go after the imposing female ducks over here. These three ducks seem to be interfering with the family group, and mama duck goes after them. Watch this. Here she comes. She's like, you get out of here, you get out of here, and she comes a charging. <laughs> wow. This is what you do every day. You watch a and here's some more wild. creatures in the neighborhood. Yeah. Okay. Are they <laughs> oh, gonna bite the head off Candale. somebody? <laughs> There you go. This looks politically incorrect. What's going on here? <laughs> that's that's <laughs> Chippendale. That's from 1955. No, 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 no. Yeah. That's that's from last week. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Oh, Alan. Hey, getting back to weddings and honeymoons and stuff, our own Keith, producer Keith, he got married and then he couldn't go on his honeymoon and it was on a cruise and they kept postponing it. Let's get an update to see if cruise lines are functioning and if he's ever going to get his money's worth or back on this cruise. All right, Keith? Keith, and I'll drop myself out. Hi. Hey, what, what, what's, when's your honeymoon? Uh, I think we might actually find out this weekend because uh, Royal Caribbean started, uh, you know, announced they're starting cruising again from the United States in July. And uh, the last one we were booked on was July 31st. And then they informed us they were canceling all the scheduled cruises through August 31st. So that meant that ours, even though they were restarting, ours was still canceled. So we get the, the good news is that because of that, we got another, um, another cruise credit for 125%. So I think now we're up to about five grand in credits, which will basically, uh, we, we can either get in like the, the giant, the most giant suite on the cruise ship or just get like five different cruises. Cause that, that's going to be ridiculous yeah. now. Five grand. But good news, bad news over the last 24 hours, we heard that uh, some cruises are starting to uh, pick up again. And yeah. in one case, everybody was vaccinated before they entered the boat. And yet somehow they still ended up with two cases of COVID. Hey, two cases is still below 95%. So <laughs> look at you, you statistically cup half yeah. full, man. Oh, and and I'm good. sure, I'm sure here, let me pop myself back on. I, I'm sure Keith, where's the, there we go. I'm sure Keith, you'll be pleased that it's uh, the Florida governor who's really doing battle against the cruise industry right now because they disagree with the CDC. And so Florida, and oh, there's thunder outside again. Uh, the CDC and Florida are suing each other right now. And actually Florida is suing the CDC. And I think that's going to get wound up in the next few weeks, according to the local news. But that's what's, that's what's stopping the cruises from starting again. Well, here's, I mean, the, here's the equation. A lawsuit keeps, keeps going for another couple of weeks. Everything will be back up and running anyway. 
Well, you have the people like you that had booked a year or so ago that have to be accommodated. And now people want to book cruises. You have to fulfill all those people from a year and and three months that were put aside. Or whenever they stop booking, people book cruises way in advance. See, this is going to be logistically, a lot of this is going to be a nightmare for a while. They're, They're actually encouraging people to book in 2022 instead of this year. Uh, I don't know how many people did. I mean, they were giving you a much better deal if you booked for 2022. Yeah, you know, it's just we're, we want to get on like the first boat out, you know, as, as soon as we can. So I'm not sure how many people are doing that. But uh, but yeah, they, they're already planning for that because they were trying to get everybody to, to book for 2022 instead. All right. But you're young, you're healthy. You've had the COVID. You've yeah. gotten through it. So yeah, go for it. Yeah. All right. It is time. We have Ryan from Wisconsin with his report. And Ryan, he sent me more stuff. <laughs> Here's what Ryan sent this week. It's sun, a sunscreen flask. <laughs> so if you want to drink at the beach, because you can't bring glass, and I would imagine a lot of them ban alcohol, here's how you get around that. So he sent me that. I'm ready to go with that. Of course, last month he sent me the Schnauzer shot glass. I heart my Schnauzer. All right. And he also sent me a scratchy, Wisconsin scratchy. I haven't done it yet. I'm still pretending I won. I don't like to. Oh, and how nice of you. If you were to have won already, which in your head you have, have. um, you're still going to do the podcast. And so that's super cool. Oh, yeah. I'll never make a peep that I've won. I'll just live quietly with my riches. Sent me a mega from Tuesday. And I haven't check the numbers. I know I didn't win the uh, the big deal. Although, Leslie, the winner, from what I heard, is in suburban Chicago and not real close to you, but still, considering it's a multi-state lottery, that's a pretty close hit. Um, if it's close enough for me to drive by their house on my bicycle and meet them and we can be friends yes. and they can invite me to uh, be part of their their world. I'm up for it. I heard it was in the town of Crestwood, if you're familiar with that, if you live in the Chicago area. Close, not close enough. Well, again, considering how many states, that's pretty close in the scheme of things. Well, and that's it. It's all so relative. Now we're talking globally. And here Ryan lives essentially in Wisconsin, which is in so many ways next door. That's right. (laughs) Ryan, how are you? You're muted Uh-oh. again, because earlier he was muted and didn't yeah, know. Check he your was. cable. Check your cable, check Ryan. Cable. No. Oh, no. Let's let's run Ryan's report and then we'll get back to him. Okay, because he's got a report Ryan. and then hopefully he'll be hooked up. Ryan, check your uh, connection there. Let me start up his report. I'm not hearing Ryan. Is, am I the only one? You're not hearing him? I'm hearing him. Anybody no, else? No, no, I'm not hearing no, him right. at all. All right. Let's try that again. Yeah. Now, I'm, hear, I'm seeing the text here. I think I've here. got the audio fix, maybe. I will hear you. Okay. I but that, that audio is not on for the all report right. either. All right. It's on the report. It's playing in my ear, but that doesn't mean it's being shared. I will share it again, and we'll get it working. Ryan, are you? Uh, is your mic working now? I think we're working. I think we're. I, think I we're hear working. him. We had a problem before we started live, yeah. and we fixed it, and then it went dead again. And now, yeah. Oh right. well, we were off for two weeks. Let's see if we've got this fixed now. Let's see. Is it playing? It's not playing. Hmm. You guys hear it now? There we go. Yeah. Yes. All yeah. right. <laughs> Wisconsin, yeah, hey. 
Happy Friday, everyone. This is Ryan from Wisconsin. I know the Gear Force Friday live shows have been away for a few weeks, but I've still been keeping tabs on things going on in Wisconsin. I have a few updates for you and a follow up to one of Gary's stories he talked about earlier in the week. To start out with, how well do we know our friends, especially when they're caregivers for us? Here's an example. A woman was just charged in Milwaukee County Court this week for killing her friends with eye drops and then stealing her money. Looks like she set it up to be a suicide as she was a caregiver, but she really put six bottles of eye drops in water and then gave that water to her friend. We always gotta make sure we know what's going on with our friends. A follow up to Gary's story about the lacrosse man who was drilling holes in his neighbor's apartment to listen and steal their underwear. We wondered how was he pulling the underwear through the holes? How many holes were they? Well, I did a little more follow up. He ended up entering her apartment on two different occasions. The first time he entered and stole the $100 worth of underwear, and then he went back again and stole $80 underwear. He was only using the holes to listen and record the audio on his cell phone. My follow-up question is, did they have a relationship before? How did he come and go out of, his, of the apartment to steal the underwear? Anyway, we figured out that he didn't have big holes that he was drilling in the walls. He was only using those for listening. And finally, how much is a $50 parking ticket worth to a city? Here's an example. Someone just got a parking ticket in the city of Brookfield for $50. That person fought the ticket, and with all the court costs and the city trying to recover the $50, to date, they spent $12,410. At that point, city officials realized that it was not worth spending any more of taxpayer money to recover the $50 worth of parking tickets that this person was fighting. They ended up settling in an undisclosed 12-page uh, document, case closed, but lesson learned. Let the $50 go. You'll save yourself some money in the long run. Have a good week. I'll talk to you next week. Okay, I have to ask you, Ryan, on that guy who stole the underwear, he drilled the holes to listen to what? To the neighbor, just to record it with the cell phone, just listen to oh. her activities. Okay. But he did enter ooh, in. The, she's he did walking get... to the kitchen. Yep. Ooh, 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 ooh. ooh, she's, ooh, <laughs> ooh. she's going uh, flush. Oh. oh, yeah, okay. But, but That's as what I he said, said, I don't know how, she, how he got in the how he got in the apartment twice. I mean, you know, there's two different times he was in there getting the underwear. So did, did he have one of those grabbers that he stuck through the hole that opened the door? <laughs> no, they the said he, entered. Finding entered. Out he didn't have to. He, yeah, he entered. So I, I don't know. It was bizarre. So um, that in uh, lately in the area, we've had a lot of uh, knock and drop a mattress. So I, it, it's kind of uh, maybe get a rid of a mattress and a prank at the same time. So, uh, Police are dealing with that of people reporting people knocking on the door. Here's a mattress. See you later. So it's huh? kind of bizarre. Mm -hmm. Why not just dump the mattress? So they wanted to make some fun out of this. Get rid of the mattress, ring the doorbell and run. Uh -huh. and, then, and you walk out, there's a mattress on your front porch. Right. Right. Uh huh. So Ooh. there, there's as you drive around, you see mattresses sitting on the curb thinking someone was going to take them. Well, the trash won't take them unless you have special pickups. So then they get, it's just more trash sitting on the edge of the road. So it's kind of been been bizarre. God, I hate humans. Humans yeah, are hey. so stupid sometimes. Yeah, hey, a listener Dan said it's Wisconsin. It's like going to Czechoslovakia. We buzz in, <laughs> we buzz out. It, yeah. If, you, if you've seen the movie Stripes, that, uh, uh, that, uh, right. Uh, I got the uh, shit beat out of me in Wisconsin. <laughs> and and, and the funny thing is, when I went to Prague, I felt the same way when I was in the Czech Republic. I'm like, it's Wisconsin. What's the yeah. big deal? We buzz in, we buzz out. What's wrong and, with that? And I would be remiss if I don't say this. Just uh, we, we got a new magnet, uh, uh, a really heavy <laughs> duty one. <laughs> wow. and, and my son was more excited. We had to get a grappling hook. You know, that's what all the pros use. Okay. You can't, I, I, you can't you know. pull it up. You got to use the grappling hook. So he was like, thrilled uh that we that we got this grappling hook so, so. now ryan has invested over two thousand dollars in magnets <laughs> for his son have you found is... have you found anything with this no we're going to our friend's lake uh this week um so we're gonna go by the sandbars and stuff so he's just stoked that we have a new magnet and we've got the 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 grab the, gra uh, the, the hook. grappling hook grappling and all of that. okay so in a moment of synergy here what say you get an old mattress, toss it into the river just before you get there, 
Now that's going to, you get that on the end of a grappling oh, yeah. hook and you've got an <laughs> afternoon. Holy. He, he, he always says, if we get a doll, can we, we have to throw it back, dad. I don't want a doll. And I said, well, I don't think that, I don't think the magnets are going to stick to a doll, but he said, well, the grappling hook would. So it's, it's just a continuing <laughs> okay. saga of this. They got doll size. <laughs> okay. Uh, if you don't know, Ryan's son, Hank, is 25 years old. That's the funny part. <laughs> now, I like the fact that he, if we get a doll, I don't want that. Should we just throw it back? Mm -hmm. No, no. It's creepy. No, here, here, here's how that works. It's the same thing when I pull into a parking lot and there are discarded scratch-off tickets on the ground. I pick them up, hoping, obviously, one still has some cash on it. If not, I put it in the proper garbage can, and, mm -hmm. not, and that's not the parking lot, like an no. actual can. So he's doing, keep the doll Till you get it to the garbage can. You don't throw yes. it back in. No, no, no. Right. But, but he was very worried about that. So he was, he was Leave very the gun, worried take that, the cannoli. Uh -huh, yeah. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So he's, a, he's about a month away from coin diving, Ryan. He is. Yeah. Well, he keeps saying, you know, YouTube, as you enter down those rabbit holes, you know, the magnet fishing ends up over with uh, uh, metal detecting. Hey, Dad, can we get a metal detector? <laughs> Here said, we no, go. No, we're, 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 you know, we just transition that over <laughs> that's funny that that new magnet is the size of a garbage can lid well and, and we got it from amazon and it said do not fly there's a note on the box about it can't be in, in the air and then you could put stuff to the back the box and it actually stuck so it's a pretty um, it's a pretty solid fly. magnet yeah i guess it wasn't transported by airplane i don't know there was a big note about um, it on oh the box. okay I hope grandma and grandpa don't have pacemakers. <laughs> okay, good. Because I, I would say steer clear of that too. I'm sure there are all sorts of things. <gasps> Wait, so can we do some magnet talk for a second? I yes, have one sure. story that <laughs> yes, we're going to um, go right to your yes. bank. That we absolutely have to incorporate here. And that is no COVID-19 vaccines do not make you magnetic. A nurse in Ohio is being publicly ridiculed for her attempt to prove otherwise. During a recent legislative hearing, uh, the vaccine opponent took to the podium to demonstrate how she has become magnetized after receiving a vaccine. And the now viral video shows her demanding answers as she shows how a key now sticks to her cleavage and her neck. Well, so she places this key on her décolletage and it does stay put for a second, but then things in this video get cringy when she repeatedly tries to get the key to stick to her neck. Um, and there's no luck there. Uh, what's even more uncomfortable is the fact that the key was made of aluminum, which wouldn't stick mm. to a magnet anyway. Mm -hmm. And so what this actually does show is that uh, science, okay, um, a key will stick to flop sweat, <laughs> but it's not going mm -hmm. to stick to your vaccine. Clark, th this piece of my head is all plastic. When the microwave <laughs> goes on, I piss my pants, that kind of person. <laughs> yeah. Um, speaking of pissing one's pants. Okay. Can we point to a, a picture that Gary posted on Facebook this week? And that is the this new fashion jean that has hit the market. Um, it is jeans that make it look like you've already wet your pants. Cool. So the, the pants look like your typical jeans with dark um, shading all around the groin area. And... Um, it's a good look for people who don't ever want to date someone again. The post I put on that picture. There they are. There they are. Oh, yeah. Line that up. There, there they are. There's the, yeah, you buy that. <laughs> you okay. pay money for it even. And yes. my, my comment was when you go to a gas station for their fountain drinks, they have three sizes. It's bucket, wading pool, and hot tub. These drink <laughs> cups are gigantic. And I... After I worked in my mother's yard, I'd stop by the gas station down the street afterwards to reward myself with a Coca-Cola. And none of the cups fit in the cup holder in the car, so I have to keep it between my legs. As I'm drinking it, I'm wetting my pants because there's so much liquid. I mean, really, they should have uh, some kind of attachment where you can insert. And as you're drinking, it's just you're just it's a cycle. You're just cycling. Uh, what else you got, Leslie? Um, I got this other story that I think you all should know about uh, because we're all about the interwebs. 
Um, so Jada Pinkett Smith apparently has a show on Facebook as well. Mm-hmm. So she, along with her mother and daughter, treated viewers of their recent Facebook watch show to an intimate vagina steaming session <laughs> on this week's episode. That's what they're of- showing. Oh, no, this is the schnauzer streaming, not the vagina steaming. <laughs> Let's make sure that people are and not confused. Rocks, but it's very different. Yeah, do not um, confuse. So this was her latest episode of Red Table Talk and the three generations of Pinkett Smiths, although I guess grandma's got a different name. It doesn't matter. Um, They all don matching lilac colored gowns to treat their nether regions and viewers to an herbal infused steam session. The play by play includes Ms. Smith extolling the virtues of, quote, spending time with your vagina and promoting steaming as an aphrodisiac. Well, it turns out not everybody is so thrilled. Lots of doctors have been checking in, issuing warnings about the practice, including the risk of burns to sensitive skin. How much was she showing on this program? I guess not much. She left a lot up to the imagination, but... Not nearly enough. It's been, okay, so here's the thing, though. Mom, you're embarrassing me. You know, um, it's her, her daughter, and the daughter's grandmother all sharing this vagina steaming together. Okay, let me grab my Gwyneth Paltrow candle and go down there and see what you're doing, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Oh, boy. Woo, doggies. Yeah, boy. Okay. Boy, that, that area, that, that, <laughs> the JJ gets so much attention and uh, de- deservedly. I mean, it really is the center of the universe and everything starts there. I get it. But man, it is on center stage lately. It is interesting that she would say spend time with your JJ because, in fact, mine follows me around <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> you I don't say- know about hers, <laughs> but I don't exactly like put it in a closet you know, for the winter and then pull it out in the spring. For yeah, it's there. Steak, woman. Where it's are you there. going? Where are you going, Missy? No, stop, stop. No, you, stop. St- you stick around. You stay. stay. I need to spend some time. With, I want quality time with you. <laughs> right. She'll be competing with Gwyneth Paltrow here pretty quick. With, yeah, that, uh, really. Either a line or, or maybe oh, yeah. some kind of collaboration. Right. Yeah. Gwyneth is already calling her. Hey, can we? have a steam with your name on it. I'll sell it. And we'll have a whole line of the mm-hmm. JJ products. You know what, gentlemen, I think right there. <laughs> leave, leave it at that. Okay. I mean, at, how do you tap that? Seriously. Well, uh, I just realized we have to pay homage to our sponsors and I'm sure. <laughs> well, that's how you tap it. That's right. You say hello to my little friends at Bettenhausen Automotive. Epic deals take center stage at Bettenhausen Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, Fiat, and certified megastore in Tinley Park and Orland Park. Right now, during the Ram Spotlight sales event, get 0.9% financing or lease a new 2021 Ram Bighorn Crew 4x4 for $3.99 per month. Bettenhausen has over 50 Ram trucks to choose from with no hassle and no haggle. Your best truck buying experience starts now at BettenhausenCDJR.com. And Bettenhausen Automotive, that's right. That's where you get the new and used cars. Biggest dealer in Illinois and a lot of those cars. Team Hochberg is your mortgage expert. And there he is, David Hochberg. He's got this thing where you can do a 21-day close. If you don't have a cash offer, if you're buying a house and you're not offering cash, well, the people that are offering cash, I guess the real estate market is just exploding. So you see a place, you want to make a bid, But if a cash offer is in front of you, uh uh-oh. So you want to have your best foot forward, and that will be the 21-day close. And David can explain all that to you if you call those numbers. You get a free consultation on that. And he does mortgages and refis and all that stuff. And he's very good, and he's a very handsome man. All right. Well, we are back. And I think we worked out some of the kinks for season two. A little bumpy there. We got some rough air. It happens. We were steaming a a vagina and streaming a schnauzer. You try to do that and fly <laughs> and, and while you're drinking. This Manhattan tastes pretty darn good in June. Oh, my mm. God. And you have to be on terrestrial radio. Yeah, I got about. No swears. No, no swears. Swear. I know. I know. Dial it back. Let's see. What? About an hour and a half. I'll be on with David Player and WGN AM 720 talking about vinyl. All right. That's it. It is time to take that complimentary cannoli coming down the aisle. Look at it. Nice. Take the cannoli. What about the schnauzer? 
So I don't suggest that you steam yours, but spend some time with your schnauzer. That's what you can do this weekend. Sounds good. It is three in the green, gears down, flaps are down. The voice of the globe, the gear force has landed. If you like that, I got other stuff I think you're going to like. This is the Gear Force. Hope your day is wonderful. Thanks for listening.